Digital technologies such as social media, mobile devices, and the internet are growing exponentially, connecting people from around the globe. This global connectivity is driving greater transparency of corporate behavior, both good and bad, and redefining what sustainability means for the industry. As the definition of sustainability evolves, is the industry willing to change its business model so it doesn't get left behind? The title of this presentation is Petrochemical Growth versus 2030, How the Connected World is Redefining Sustainability. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Peter Cella, the CEO of Chevron Phillips Chemical Company. Mr. Cella also serves on the Board of Directors and Executive Committee for the American Chemistry Council. Mr. Cella. Ms. Hani, thank you for that very warm introduction. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to day two of the ninth annual GPCA Forum. I'm delighted to be back in Doha, or in Dubai, excuse me. It is my pleasure to speak with you this morning about the topic of sustainability and our view that mobile technology, the internet, and social media are driving a new era in what defines the sustainability of an enterprise and an industry. Literally billions of people across the planet are connected to each other 24 hours a day. And this global connectivity, powered by technology, results in greater transparency of corporate behavior, both good and bad, and is redefining what sustainability means for our industry. We refer to this next phase of sustainability as global conduct. By global conduct, we mean the behavior of every employee throughout an enterprise, including aspects such as how we treat employees, how we deal with members of the communities in which we operate, and how we treat customers, suppliers, and service providers. Allow me to make my case. Digital technologies are empowering members of the public in ways that were unimaginable just 10 years ago. Rupert Murdoch observed this when he said, technology is shifting power away from editors, the publishers, the establishment, and the media elite. Now it's the people who are in control. According to a 2014 Business Insider report, Americans spend more time on social media than any other major internet activity, including email. In my family, I have three young adult children and I can tell you, they spend more time on social media than just about any other activity, period. The world's biggest social media users are in Indonesia and in Saudi Arabia, where they spend, on average, more than five hours per day online. In the U.S., the average is about three hours per day, but the so-called millennial generation, those ages 18 to 34, report spending nearly four hours per day on social media, 50% more than baby boomers. There's no question that the leaders of industry and commerce in 2030 will have grown up in the internet age with mobile technology and social media woven into the fabric of their lives, both at work and at home. To provide you with a sense of the power of global connectivity, I'd like to share a few factoids. Did you know there are more people on the planet who own a mobile phone than who own a toothbrush? As Dr. Conley said, there are about 7 billion people on the planet. 4 billion of them use a mobile phone. Only 3.5 billion use a toothbrush. In terms of audience reach, it took radio 38 years to reach 50 million listeners while Facebook added more than 200 million users within one year of launch. There are now almost 2 billion Facebook users globally, and nearly 75% of them use uh, mobile devo devices to access Facebook. Every two days, more than 1 billion tweets are sent. There are over 230 million Twitter users, and 75% of them access Twitter with mobile devices. 
YouTube is now the second largest search engine on the planet following Google. Each month, YouTube users watch more than six billion hours of video, which equates to nearly one hour for every person on the planet. There are one billion YouTube visitors in an average month, reaching more U.S. adults between the ages of 18 and 34 than any cable TV network. And this activity is not passive. 70% of mobile searches lead to users taking some type of action within one hour. Examples include retweeting or posting a message, donating to a cause, making a purchase, or signing an online petition. It takes a full month for the same percentage of desktop users to take an action after conducting a search. Here at GPCA, we are embracing digital connectivity by using social media tools such as mobile apps and Twitter to promote the conference, the speakers, and the sponsors. So what is the importance of global connectivity in social media? Well, I'd like to quote Brian Solis, a digital analyst and author. Social media sparks a revelation that we the people have a voice. And through the democratization of content and ideas, we can once again unite around a common passion, inspire movements, and ignite change. I'd like to share two examples of social responsibility grassroots campaigns that took the global stage thanks to social media. In Brazil, a group of 2,000 people protested against a proposed increase in bus fare. This happened just prior to this year's World Cup. Within 24 hours, social media connectivity transformed this movement into a series of mass protests. As a result, the government agreed to cancel the fare hike. To make this happen, organizers launched a massive social media strategy employing a variety of tools to create and share information about the protests. For example, Facebook was widely used as a way to organize and disseminate protest information to the three out of every nine Brazilians who use Facebook on a regular basis. 81% of the demonstrators learned about the protests through Facebook. Many hashtags related to the protest were trending on Twitter, and there were millions of tweets sent during the three-week protest period. Many videos and podcasts were co-created and streamed on blogs and other social media tools. Celebrities even chimed in on the issue, including singer Beyonce, politician and actor Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg. Here is another example from Bangladesh. In 2013, an eight-story commercial building collapsed in Greater Dhaka, resulting in the devastating death toll of 1,129 people. The building was used to manufacture clothing for major retailers. The incident provoked severe criticism and protest against clothing retailers around the world and highlighted the poor working conditions in underdeveloped countries such as Bangladesh, Haiti, and Cambodia. Social media allowed people to rally around a common cause that they coined sweatshops employed by big retailers. As a result, fashion brands such as Sweden's H&M, Spain's Zara, and America's Gap agreed to create a joint safety plan that includes evaluating the fire and safety systems in the factories of suppliers and providing humane working conditions for all workers. Designers Tommy Hilfiger and Izod also accepted the new safety plan and promised a contribution of $2.5 million to underwrite factory safety improvements. These developments led to a Fashion Revolution Day, an organization that ran a global campaign against poor working conditions through the use of online media channels. News articles and videos related to the Bangladesh tragedy generated thousands of views, and millions of people signed online petitions showing their disapproval of inhumane working conditions in the supply chains of these major retailers. In both of the examples I just gave, social media connectivity provided a platform for people to organize and share their criticism and their anger. 
It also enabled companies and governments to better understand the public's sentiment and perceptions, and then take action to conduct business in a more socially responsible manner. Now that we've looked at the power of social media and the connected world, let's look at how this phenomenon is redefining sustainability and how we conduct ourselves in business today and beyond. First, let's look at how sustainability is currently defined. This is a widely accepted definition of sustainability from the World Commission on Environment and Development. Sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. I'm making the argument that these needs are shifting and that the elements that make an enterprise sustainable are dynamic and must be in tune with these changing needs. Allow me to show you the concept of how the concept of sustainability has evolved over the past 100 years. At the start of the 20th century, the first gear to power the mechanics of sustainability was related to worker safety. As part of the first wave of the Industrial Revolution, people were moving from farms to the factories. However, these early industrial workers were getting hurt at an unacceptable rate, and blue-collar activism was born. This led to the rise of trade unions globally and workplace safety and workers' compensation laws in the United States. Fast forward 50 years, and we saw a post-war wave of economic growth and industrial development, giving rise to greater awareness of the impact of these developments on the environment and the planet's limited resources. Emissions from factories and the accelerated consumption of depletable raw materials led to increased individual eco-activism and government regulation. Toward the end of the 20th century, yet another cog is added to the mechanics of sustainability, corporate social responsibility, captured by the catchphrase, triple bottom line, meaning profit, planet, and people. For our industry, the topics of process safety and product stewardship throughout the supply chain took center stage, underscored by the 1984 disaster in Bhopal, India. Our collective response was the development of responsible care, a commitment to continuous improvement, transparency, and excellence up and down the value chain. Within the American Chemistry Council, there is a common commitment that companies participating in responsible care will provide greater assurance to commercial partners because they are implementing robust environmental health and safety programs, are being good stewards of their products as they travel throughout the value chain, and are less likely to have disruptions due to process incidents or accidents. Hopefully, you will agree that sustainability is a moving target, formed by society's evolving expectations of an enterprise. So what's next for sustainability today and beyond? We believe that another gear is being added to the definition of sustainability, and I mentioned it earlier, global conduct. Of course, we must still meet the needs of the triple bottom line. But as I mentioned earlier, information about a given company's actions is readily available and easily captured and distributed via posts, links, tweets by the various stakeholders. Mobile devices, the internet, and social media have created a massive step change in the level of transparency surrounding the actions of every enterprise. The days of managing a company's reputation by issuing press releases from the corner office are over. The reputation and the sustainability of any enterprise are now shaped by the individual actions of every employee, from leaders to frontline workers. We can no longer just say we're doing the right thing. We, and I mean every employee in the organization, have to do the right thing every time. And we, and I mean the leaders at this conference, have to clearly communicate and integrate our values and our ethics, such as safety, mutual respect, integrity, into the DNA of our companies. The single act of any employee can shape the global reputation for any of us. So we must ensure that each and every employee will conduct himself or herself in alignment with these values.
to be truly sustainable, a company must meet the expectations of the people it touches, especially its stakeholders. At various points, some stakeholders are more critical than others, but any of them can draw attention to our global conduct in today's digital world. Let me share a couple of examples from two stakeholder groups, employees and the communities where we invest and operate. Let's start with employees. With the power of social media, any employee can make a headline, good or bad, for any one of our companies. Here's an example of how one employee made waves for his employer and several other companies at the same time. One year ago this week, a manager at Pizza Hut, this is an American restaurant chain, was fired for refusing to open his store on the American holiday Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the American version of a harvest celebration and is usually spent at home with family giving thanks for the blessings of the past year. News of the manager being fired for his stand against the company policy went viral on social media channels, sparking protests against Pizza Hut. This sparked similar protests against other retailers, such as Walmart and Target, as employees criticized the policy of retailers opening their stores on such an important American holiday. This is a good example of how one issue for one company can ignite a firestorm for many other companies, forcing them to openly evaluate and defend their policies in the harsh court of public opinion. In the end, Pizza Hut apologized and reversed its policy. The impact of global connectivity on the reputation of an enterprise from the actions of a single employee is now an everyday reality. Another everyday reality is transparent online dialogue among employees about their employer. Consider these findings from a recent study by public relations firm Weber Shandwick. One half of those polled said they post messages, pictures, or videos in social media about their employers. Two of five have shared positive or praise, positive comments or praise about their employer, but one in six have shared criticism or negative comments online about their employer. Now let's turn to the communities where we invest and operate and the powerful voice they are finding on social media. Here's an example in China. In 2012, citizens of Xifang, a southwestern city in Sichuan province, protested against the copper plant proposed to be built in the area. The protest drew thousands, largely due to sharing of photos and blogging posts on networks such as Sina Weibo. During the two-day protest, more than five million posts were shared, including 400,000 images and 10,000 videos. The city government ultimately abandoned its plans to build the copper plant and actually turned to social media to openly provide information in an effort to calm its citizens. In conclusion, we cannot afford to ignore the power of social media and the impact of global connectivity. Companies that don't behave with high integrity and transparency won't be around in 2030. That's why ensuring appropriate global conduct is so important. It's about doing the right thing up and down the company, starting with leadership. We have to ensure core values are instilled in every employee. We must empower our employees and recognize shining examples of global conduct throughout our organizations. Lastly, I encourage all of us to be proactive in using these same technologies to shape our reputation. Let's play offense and find ways to leverage social media platforms to our advantage. Let's use social media as a tool for listening to the stakeholders and responding to their needs. Global connectivity is redefining what it takes to be a sustainable enterprise. By working to ensure global conduct is aligned with company values, each leader in this room can help maintain the sustainability of his or her enterprise 
in this new era. Thank you for your time and attention today. I hope to connect with you soon.